All right, many thanks to Sheikh Husila for that report. Um, uh, the bail of Mohammed Kamarim Bamansari and his co accused have come, you know, following requests from um, social or civil society activists and human rights campaigners um, ab about his, you know, health and yeah. um, the fact that he has been behind bars for over a year. Right. Right. Yeah, and online now we have um, his um, lead defense counsel, um, lawyer Emmanuel Safa Abdullahi. Um, Emmanuel, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Yeah, good morning, David. Um, all right, Emmanuel, we've, we've had you um, when you've, um, in, in previous um, days or weeks, when you've um, submitted application for Mohammed Kamarimba Mansari to be granted bail. And um, those um, moments or those applications were not granted by the court. But now he has been granted a bill and um, with some conditions. First off, tell us um, about the, the health condition of Mohamed Kamariba Mansai and whether or not he has met the conditions um, given by the court. Um, well, Mohamed has not been well for a long time. I mean, this is not news. It has been reported because this is something that we raised in September 2020, and the, the High Court granted an order for the um, Director of Medical Services to go to prisons and examine him. Um, it was a matter of trying to get um, um, the medical people to testify before the court, which took so long. Um, uh, but unfortunately, we we only got the orders uh, a couple of a couple of days ago. Um, Mohammed will be able to meet the bail conditions. Yesterday, the bail was granted almost at about three o'clock. So it was quite impossible to do the processing. This morning, his family and friends, his families and friends are there trying to ensure that he meets the bail condition. Then he will go home. But as you know, he has been sick for a long time. Uh, as you talk about his health condition, that was um, challenged by um, the judiciary's um, spokesperson, um, El Kassano, saying that um, the documents that were put forward to the court, the, um, they were not as credible as they were, because I mean, they were not complete documents, and so the court had to, to, to seek um, a redo of the entire um, examination of his health condition. So what did this mean now as... Um, well, I, I mean, for you, the legal that team, I um, from, uh, defending yeah, Mohamed Kamari. That, that wasn't true. It has never been true. No documents were presented and rejected. We have to set the record straight. I, like I said, I don't want to do a trial on, on media. Mm. We applied for bail. The prison doctors provided a medical report after examining Mohamed that he was sick that he had, there was a sign of prostate cancer. That document was not tendered in court because the court said um, we need to bring the prison authorities to tender the document, which we did. And then the court ordered Mohammed to be moved from prisons to um, an established hospital where he was for a couple of months and then taken back to prison. So this is the trend. You know, there has been nothing different from what I have said. Mohamed has been sick. We did not diagnose him. We did not take him to the hospital. The prison authorities themselves found that he was practically sick, and they did a report. And after that, he was taken to a hospital, <clears throat> and the hospital treated him for a while and taken back to prison. We have insisted that there is no sufficient medical um, facilities in prison to treat him for the sickness which he's complaining of. And that's what it is. We are excited that he eventually got bail yesterday, and we hope that he will be able to seek the medical treatment that is required of him, and will continue to try. Can I quickly, Emmanuel? Can I quickly ask you this question um, regarding his health condition? What if, in a situation we live in a society where almost, I mean, those who are well to do can afford it? When it comes to their health con um, situations, they would not want them to be, I mean, themselves to be treated here. And um, it appeared from the conditions given that Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari poses a flight risk. I mean, asking him to report and sign um, a register at the master and registrar's office three days a week. What if in a situation he's deteriorates to a point that he should 
uh, be traveled out, um, it should be taken out of Sierra Leone for treatment. Is that something you're considering applying for? Well, that, that's a whole different situation. We haven't gotten to that. When we get to that, then the court will have to consider that. We'll make the necessary application to the court. As of now, he's out. I mean, he will be out today, hopefully, when the processes are completed. And then he will be taken to the hospital. And then we'll continue to try. If we got to a situation where he's unable to get sufficient medical treatment, then we'll have to decide it a new device in which um, the court will consider. I mean, it has to be on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. Um, just as a way to round up before we let you go, uh, what would you like to say regarding this entire process? Um, you've been pushing for bail for a couple of months. I mean, since he was incarcerated or, incarcerated or detained uh, um, at the Padamba Road Prisons or uh, Correctional Center, and it's been a long journey up to this point, over a year in detention for Cameron Bamansari. Uh, um, so do you still trust the judiciary in terms of handling this matter? The judiciary is the avenue where this matter has to be. I am a member of the judiciary. I'm, I'm, I'm a court officer as a lawyer. We believe that um, the judiciary will provide the platform <coughs> sorry, where our clients will get be a trial. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to do an assessment of a trial that is ongoing. I don't want to do an assessment uh, of, of the judiciary when I am basically participating in a trial. That's, that's not how it should be as a lawyer. And I, I have always avoided um, even having the media communication on, on media, media talk on, on this case. I only do on exceptional circumstances. But as we are, we are before court, court established by the Constitution, and that Constitution says the court will deliver fear and equitable justice to everyone and we believe that's what we're seeking in this matter all right thank you very much for speaking to us there um wishing you a lovely day thank you all right um that was emmanuel safa abdullahi um the lead for the legal defense team of mohammed kamarimba mansari the 2018 presidential candidate who is currently standing trial um sexual offenses um, charges there in um, the right. sexual model court. And um, we must make it clear that uh, it's Cameron Bamansari and his co-accused right. who have been granted bail. Um, um, the lady in question was also detained there, uh, yeah. uh, Maria Maruni, but mm -hmm. they have both been granted bail. Uh, the bail conditions include a hundred million leons, um, two, two shorties, shorties who must um, deliver their traveling documents. And one of um, them. One must possess um, house ownership documents. Right. And they all must report to the master, master and, and registrar of the high court. Three days um, a week. Three days a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, so um, that, that, that's it there. We're now trying to get the director of um, communications of um, the judiciary, El Cas Sano, to tell us um, El Casano had um, advanced argument that the medical reports presented by um, the legal team of Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari when applying for bail um, mm -hmm. was not conclusive, and so the court had to order, uh, um, I mean, order for two experts to go and redo, um, re-examine um, Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari and um, assess his. Um, and it's condition, but I think El Casano is there with us now. El Cas, good morning and welcome to Wake Up Sierra Leone. Good morning. Yeah, um, we've had you um, on, on this particular show um, previously, and you mentioned that um, the medical report presented, which was signed by the chief medical officer of, uh, at the Ministry of Health, was not conclusive, but uh, the court ordered that, um, I mean, a re-examination should be done by to experts, and I'm sure that has been done now. And uh, Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari has been granted bail owing to the fact that, I mean, his health condition is deteriorating. Um, what does that speak to in terms of the applications that were being made by the, the legal team of Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari? Um, yes, um, having fulfilled the bail required, the, the um, um, sorry, having fulfilled the requirement. Um, for the granting of bail, the Honorable Judge, had, um, one of the appeals court judges who sits 
or preside over cases as a sexual offenses model court. Yesterday, granted bail to Mohamed Kamarimba Mansare and uh, the co-accused, Marion Aouni. Matthew, um, like I stated previously, I said bail falls within the remit of the judge who presides over that particular case as provided for the in this um, criminal procedure act section 79 1 2 and 3. now um yesterday we saw a situation wherein after the renewal of the bail application by the defense team the prosecuting team did not object to bail and they said they are actually not averse to bail um, I also used to tell um, Sri Leoneans that when you talk about bail, the, an, an application is normally being made by the defense team to convince or canvas the court to allow the judge to grant bail to um, their client. After which, the prosecuting team will either object or not object. If the prosecuting team objects and the reasons advance, it's convincing to the court. At the end of the day, the court, that is the judge, will decide not to give bail. But as we speak, Kamaremba Mantare and the co-accused were granted bail yesterday. But the situation here now is um, they are still... Um, under detention or at the correctional center because the bail... Um, they have not met the conditions. Not, they, but quickly, they, Elkas, because we're running out of time, quickly, um, in terms of um, the, the, the Criminal Procedure Act that gives, I mean, power to the judge to use, I mean, his discretion to grant bail or not, there, there are guidelines, especially with um, the bail and sentencing regulation. Even without uh, Mohamed Kamayimba's health condition, they've applied for, um, for bail. Does it only have to be that um, when his health condition is deteriorating, that the, the, the judge will use his, um, his discretion to grant Kamayimba bail? No, aside from, aside from the deteriorating um, health condition of the accused person, it is the discretion of the judge also to give bail. Matthew, bail, um, we always say bail is free. But even though it is free, it is tied down to the discretion of the judge. In them we see bail regulation, which means it is telling the judge, even though the Criminal Procedure Act says it is your discretion, but it must be tied to the, to the uh, um, bail regulation, which means there should be reason for refusing or granting bail. That's, that's, that's so explicit. Okay. The reason why the reason why the reason, the reason why that bail regulation was was actually um, developed is to make sure we we the, the court is very much magnanimous when it comes to the issue of granting bail. Matthew All right. also El Cas, like, like yes. I mentioned. Like I mentioned, because of time, we'll, we'll be interrupting you there. Just, I mean, just a, a, a question, um, a final question for me. Um, the, the issue of establishing a sexual model court was to expedite trials and all of that. But we've seen this case uh, has gone for 14 months without a decision. I mean, is, is this not almost saying, well, it's the, there, there would have been no need for the setting up of a sexual um, model court to expedite trials of um, such nature because it's 14 months yeah, yes um that's the fundamental reason of establishing the sexual offenses model court one to ensure fair trial and secondly to expeditiously try um an accused person or to ensure a um, speedy conclusion of the matter but even though that's what we, we actually want to enhance efficiency and effectiveness when um, we talk about um, um, proceedings. But also, um, 
if the if the if the um, the matter um, from both ends is not is, uh, um, the the acute the, sorry the prosecuting team and the defense team that are, are cause for the delay are cause for the delay you don't blame the court for, for for instance within within three months the prosecuting team completed their own case so it was or it is still left with the defense now to speedily make sure they are in compliance to why they so the reason of setting up of the sexual offenses court which is to enhance uh, effective, effective and efficient uh, uh, um, job. so i are you saying are you, El Kass, are you are you saying the defense team the that's mohammed kamarimba's part um have on their own part failed to deliver the things that could make the that could fast track the process of the trial. It, 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 exactly. It, to a very large extent they they have contributed to the delay. Even oh. yesterday, even yesterday they, they asked for adjournment. Yeah let, let me let, let me also say this so Sri Leonian. There was even a time for one month Kamarimba was not attending court. And even the, 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 the defense team, we are not coming to court one month. Not until when the court, because the court wants to enhance speedy trial proceedings of the matter, they order them to appear before the court. This is just to ensure so, uh, um, we, we live up to the expectations or the reason why the sexual offenses model court was established. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for speaking to us there, Elkas. Thank you very much. Grateful.